Hey everyone, this is Owen with Motion Ray, and in this tutorial I'll be showing you how to make 3D text that has a nice glassy look, all inside of After Effects. Alright, let's get started. I'll begin by making a new composition, and I'll make it HDTV 1080 2997. I'll name it Glass Text, and then I'll hit OK. The first thing I'll do in this new composition is I'll use the text tool to type out Glass, and I'll add faux bold and faux italic, and I'll also scale it up to fill out the composition a little bit better. Then I'll use the align panel to center it to the composition. And last, I'll turn it into a 3D layer. Next, I'm gonna bring in some footage to act as my background and the reflection for my glass text. Now, I've already pulled some footage from Motion Array, but feel free to use whatever footage you have. This sky footage I'm going to use as my reflection, so I'm going to drag that to the bottom and I can go ahead and turn that layer off. Then I'll go up to Layer, New, Light. And in my light settings, I want to make sure it's a point light with the color white. And my intensity, I'll bring up to 75%. And then I'll hit OK. I'll pull up the position of the light with P and I'll make it centered to my composition by changing the X dimension to 960 and the Y dimension to 540. Then I'll go back up to Layer, New, Solid. I'm going to call this Solid Caustics, and I want to make sure it's comp sized, and then I'll hit OK. Then I'll drag that layer to the top of the layer stack. With the solid still selected, I'll go up to Effect, Simulation, Caustics. Caustics is typically used to create underwater lighting effects, but we're going to use it to create this nice glass effect. In the caustic settings for bottom, that would typically be like the bottom of a pool or something like that. We're going to use it as our background footage, so that's the wheat field. You'll notice that it's tinted blue and that's just because it's trying to make it look like it's underwater, so we'll eventually change that. Back in the bottom settings, I'm going to change that blur to 0.5. Then for the water surface, I'll select my text layer. When I do that, you can see that I get sort of beveled edges around the outline of the text. In the water settings, I'll change the water depth to 0.5 and the color to white. Then in the sky settings, I'll change the layer to my sky footage. I'll twirl down my lighting settings and then I'll change the light type from distant source to first comp light and that'll start referencing that point light that we made earlier. That's it for the caustics effect right now, but we'll come back to this layer a little bit later. In the top right corner of my composition window, you'll see this renderer text and right next to it, it says classic 3D and that's the default for After Effects. But I wanna make my type 3D and there's an easy way to do that if I change from classic 3D. So if I click that button there, it opens up some composition settings and I'm gonna change my renderer from classic 3D to cinema 4D. And when I do that, you'll see that there's certain features that are going to be enabled, like extruding and beveling text, but there's also a lot of things that get disabled. Another downside of using this as a renderer is that it's going to slow down your composition a little bit. So if you don't need any of these features, then I highly recommend staying with Classic 3D. Since I'm going to be using it to extrude my text, I'm going to stick with Cinema 4D and then I'm going to hit OK. Now when I twirl down my text, you'll see I have another menu here of geometry options. And when I twirl that down, I'll get a few more properties. I'm only going to be focusing on the extrusion depth because that's going to give me the depth that I'm looking for in my text. I'll change the value from 0 to 60. It's a little hard to see right now, but we'll fix that. With my text layer still selected, I'll go up to the Edit menu and go to Copy with Property Links. Then I'll go to Edit, Paste. This creates an exact copy of my text that will follow any of the changes that I'd make on the original one. So I'll drag this duplicate above my caustics layer and then I'll change the caustics track mat to alpha mat. And so now the caustics is only happening on my text. My text is feeling a little small right now, so I'll go back to the original text layer and pull up its scale with S and I'll bring up that value a little bit. And you'll see that my mat scaled with the original. Things are looking really good now. I'm just gonna refine the look of the glass to finish up. So I'll go into my caustic settings and I'll change the surface opacity to 0.2 and the intensity of the sky to 0.2 as well. So that'll give me a little bit more transparency. Then I'll go up to effect and go to color correction, brightness and contrast. And I'll turn up the contrast to about 50. 
Then I'll go back up to Effect, Color Correction, and go to Tint. And I'll change that amount to Tint to about 15%, just to give me a little bit of a frosted look. Now I'll just set an endpoint for my work area, and I'll RAM Preview. You can see the reflection and transparency in the glass, and it moves with the footage, which is great. Now, this effect isn't just for footage. You can even do this on a graphic background, and I have another example over here. And in this example, I did almost the exact same process. The only difference is I didn't add a sky to reflect the front on it, so it's very transparent. So there's really a lot of different things you can do with this caustics effect to get different looks. Well, that concludes this tutorial. I hope you guys found it helpful. If you did and you'd like to see more tutorials, please go ahead and subscribe because we're making new ones all the time. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.